Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another stealth camp with me, David McEntee, and I'm here with my friend James. Yeah, today we're going to be doing a stealth camp in a World War I trench, guys. I'm not kidding, that is not a joke. We are going to be stealth camping in a World War I trench, guys. I am super excited for this. It's going to be hilarious. Basically, not too far away from our local town is a World War I trench that was used by uh, guys who were training basically to go to war uh, and they dug out a series of trenches and it's this kind of open museum, kind of memorial place that isn't like super heavily guarded or controlled. It's just open to the public, open to use because it's, you know, it's a trench and today we're basically just gonna, yeah, basically sleep there, spend the night there. Let's do it my friends. Here, we just got to follow this trail basically. This is going to be jokes, dude. It's so beautiful. We've got a really good day for this. Yeah, I didn't sleep too well on the M25, but this is going to be like super peaceful. I mean, me and James have come here on possibly the best day of the year so far. It's like early February and it is like sunshine. It is blue skies and yeah, we're feeling really positive. This is going to be absolutely jokes. Hopefully everything goes to plan. We'll see. We are coming up to the World War One trenches now. There's a sign up ahead that gives you a lowdown on all the history of this thing. So we'll start off there and then I think we'll do a little tour of these trenches guys and just see what kind of state they're in. So this is the trenches guys behind us there. That's the trenches and here's the history of it. James, you want to read it? Go on. Um, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. In World War One, Berkhamsted and the surrounding countryside were in the main camp and training base for the corps. Recruits spent several months in intense training, building skills and character before being commissioned into other regiments. By 1918, over half of the 12,000 officers were casualties, including 2,200 killed. Many bravery honors were awarded to men who had served in the Devil's Own, including three Victoria Crosses. Berkhamsted was, was their last period of normality before the horrors of the Western Front. For very long periods, the Western Front was characterized by a continuous line of static trenches stretching from the North Sea to Switzerland. To prepare trainees, 7.5 miles of practice trenches were dug on North Church and Berkhamsted Commons. And we're going to be spending a night in probably the same trenches that a bunch of these guys have spent the night in. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating, really fascinating. Look at this to the right. I think it's like a dugout or something. Go yeah, go on, let's check it out. This looks like an office or something, doesn't it? Yeah, let's go check it out. This is a very cool location, guys. This is like super historic and just fascinating. It's mad to think that they've dug out all these trenches to prepare, you know, all the troops and all the men for the Western Front. Yeah, clearly, as you can tell, the trenches have been filled in a little bit over time, like the banks have eroded. Now they're about waist height at, at some points, but back there it did go up to uh, past our neck. So it's interesting to see how this thing has changed over time. But yeah, it's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? I think up ahead, James, there might be some kind of like big crater. It looks literally like a bomb's gone off here or something. What else could make something this big? Easy, easy. Christ. We could pitch up here tonight if we wanted to. Yeah. Could work. Yes, yeah, you go and check it out. When you're down here, it's absolutely mental. Oh, well, that was fun. Let's go back to the trenches. We're retracing our steps. We're going to go back along this uh, trench and try to find a cool place that we can spend the night, guys. Yeah, it's definitely quietening down around us, but there are quite a lot of dog walkers out and about, so. We've got to be careful that we don't get spotted and we don't get rumbled, guys. But yeah, now we're going to go into a bit more of an overgrown section, so let's do it. All right, got to jump this, mate. Ooh. Ooh. Don't fall. Yes. Good man, good man. Yeah, I'm hoping down here could be where we spend the night because it's a little bit more off the beaten track and a little bit more overgrown. Moss everywhere. Trees or even in the trenches themselves, I don't know. Yeah. Like a tank could go nicely in there. Yeah. Um, but we could also pitch up anywhere along here. Or like in this section up here, if we want to be above the trenches. Yeah, we've got loads of choices. Look, here though, there's somewhat of an old campfire. 
It's literally an old campfire right here, guys. Someone else has spent the night in the trenches recently. Look. So we could easily be here, mate. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Awesome. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing there, bro? It looks sick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have a bit of a surprise for you guys. We have a friend called Tommy. He's a bit of a World War One enthusiast. And when I told him that we were gonna be doing this trip in the World War One trenches, he said that he actually had some original World War One helmets. That... Hold on guys, correction. These are not World War One helmets. These are World War Two helmets. Sorry, I've got that wrong. This helmet is from like 1939. It literally has it stamped on the bottom of the helmet. I'll show you that now. But yeah, basically we got these helmets for a laugh with us guys. Thing is they're quite small. I mean, we've also both got two massive heads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not gonna put the strap over the front, I'm gonna put the strap over the back. But how do I look, mate? <laughs> yeah, how do I look? We are pretty confident that this is where we're gonna spend the night. It's not 100% hidden. Just over here is like a prime area for dog walkers. But we're thinking maybe we could set up my camo net like across us from here to here. I've got some pegs with me too, so we could peg in the camo net there put down like our oh, cooking there, maybe have James's tent here and maybe put my one here or maybe I'll just sleep under the stars, who knows. Oh yeah, look, you look solid James. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. with the strap at the front and all. Nice. <laughs> Guys, I brought up my other down jacket out today just to try out something new and to, you know, wear something that blends in a little bit more. So yeah, going for the Rab Micro Light down jacket. Oh, temperature's dropping already. So? So nice being out in nature. I know, it's beautiful. Especially this area. I'm double down jacking it today, buddy. Well, yeah, it's got me done. We're now just like, just waiting for people to just disappear, really. Look, there's all kinds of people around. Look, there's two big horses up here too. And over here, this is where we were thinking about stealth camping. Just here, that's where James is probably sat in there right now. It's quite well hidden from afar. It doesn't actually look that obvious, which is a good sign. It is basically on a main walking path, so. <laughs> It's quite risky. We're in a very exposed area, so for the last like hour, we've just been trying to keep a low profile and just chill out and just look like nature photographers. But yeah, we think we're getting there now where we can start to get the camp set up and start to like sort of bed down for the night. James is somewhere off in the trees now, so so I'm gonna get some bits out and we're gonna get started, friends. The inside here is the camo net. In deer? What? Yeah. Hopefully we'll get a deer on camera at some point, mate. I've got, I've got a couple of cords that we could tie onto it. I'll find a tree to put this over now. So guys, check this out. Look, we've set up our nice little camo net. I know it's obvious on this side, but hopefully on the other side, helps to protect us a little bit. Sort of matches the color of the background. And from afar, will just help obscure where we're gonna stay because this is our main window. You know, people can see it. People are walking along there and stuff. You'd see our tents otherwise, so hopefully this just obscures us from view a little bit more. Let's get the camp set up, shall we? This is exciting now. Keeping a really low profile, but now we're at the point where we just have to get the camp set up, otherwise we're not going to get it done. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and set up a tarp. This is the first time I've ever done it. I mean, the first time you've ever done it too, isn't it? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here is the beginning of a tarp. We really have no idea what we're doing this thing. We're working out as we go. We know that we've set it up wrong as well, so. We're just working with the, with the cables that we have left. We're going to give this a good go and just see how it works out. But we are just trying to figure out these last two corners and then hopefully have a bit more shelter. But it's funny figuring this thing out. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the camp is set up and we are very, very happy. Um, it's an absolutely gorgeous night. You can see this beautiful sunset above our camp. It's been stressful, we've it's been quite tense. We've been waiting for people to leave before we set up our camp. So we've had to do like a mad, mad scramble to get everything set up in the last sort of 20 minutes of the day. So that's been stressful, but it doesn't matter because we're set up now, we are chilling. And what an amazing location to do it in, guys. These trenches have been fascinating to be around. We've seen so many, you know, people just interested in history, checking it out themselves. And yeah, it's just been wonderful to be here. And yeah, it's a great spot. Now that we're in the darkness, I don't think we'll see anyone else come by our tents. Um, this is probably the first time I've ever been in the woods at night, so. Uh, it's a little bit spooky, getting the tents up now. Nice. Uh. <laughs> Get lost. Okay. 
was James scaring me, ladies and gentlemen. James is trying to scare me in the woods. That is no fun. I'm gonna get you back for that, James. It's a ghost. <laughs> Nearly there. That is not going anywhere. That is the tent virtually set up. It's feeling very claustrophobic in here today, but that's just purely because I'm in a trench. Um, but yeah, tent is set up, ready for bed. Now it's time to cook dinner and just get the burgers on, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna get the burgers on. This is what it's like to sleep in a trench, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, there's a wall on either side, I and mean, it's quite intense in there, but it's a good spot. It's been a struggle, hasn't it? It's a bit cramped, isn't it, down here? It is a little but bit cramped. It's cosy at the same time. Yeah. Do you want to cook one or two? Well, I mean two. But... Two, yeah, all right, two it is then. <laughs> two, you mean two each? Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look, you look like it too, mate. Oh, yeah. Get a burger in there, lad. Yeah, Here we go. Should we, should we cook two at a time or one at a time? Yeah, two at a time. Just show up. Yeah, send it. Send it to Two. Over the years, me and James have had many barbecues together. Man, I remember the, um, during the summer barbecue you had. Yeah. Um, in Normandy. Remember that? Yeah. Right over there. So, so much so fun, man. Yeah. I live for those. I live for those. My, my whole year. It's yeah. Just waiting for those days. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Waiting for the burgers to come. Yeah, burgers, yeah. Insider knowledge: this pan is really good. That pan is not as good. You can give me the bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got the good stove, but the bad pan. <laughs> Our lovely burgers. <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh, <laughs> it's all right. It's like it's like that little leaf is added uh, nutrition. Yeah, added nutrition yeah. and texture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the big flip. Go on, lads. Bam! Look Ooh. at that. That's a nice colour, brother. Yeah. yeah. God, we have a sear. <laughs> How long does it take on me? I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes? <sighs> yeah, you can't stand it, can you? <laughs> That's all right. Can't stand the weight. This is the, this is the best part, man. Yeah, it is actually. The cooking is so much fun. Cool. The smell of the burgers as well. So, James, while the burgers are cooking, tell them how so far your stealth camp has gone. It's your first ever stealth camp. Yeah. Um, very different to last time. Yes. Very, very, very different. Cager uh, Kaja, Kaja Idris. Yeah. That's how you say it. I think so. Um, yeah, very chill, um, very local. But yeah, it's been fun, man. Yeah. Um, it's a bit more exploring, I guess. You know, it's very different. It's, it's almost different. the opposite, really. Yeah, uh, it feels like that, doesn't it? It's, it's kind of nice to be out in the cold. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Last time we were out together, it was what like 30 degrees height of the summer. Yeah. And we were up a mountain. Yeah. It's complete contrast to this. Complete. Really. Yeah. We're well, like down a down a ditch. Yeah. Now we're down in the ditch, like, in the cold, in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a, it's always good to hang with you, man. So Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here, man. It's always fun. It's yeah. so much fun doing these things with people. Yeah. Like, yeah. so much more fun doing it with me. That looks so good, mate. James, the absolute cheese wizard that he is, is getting the cheeses on the burgers. <laughs> That's me. Looking good, bro. Well, they look good, bro. They're pretty much done, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Should we take, turn off the heat? Yeah. Alright, that's off. Bomb. Cheers, bro. Cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's cooked. Yeah, it's cooked well. That's what matters. You can't be like food that's cooked outside. Beer just fell in the pan, which means my next burger is now going to taste a little bit beery. It's going to be fun. Looking forward to that. <laughs> We've heard a couple of owls already, haven't we? It's like the first thing that happened when it went dark. Started yeah. hearing like loads of owls all made noises. Or a deer as well. Didn't mm. we? Scurrying away. Yeah, you nearly got run up on by a deer. Yeah, I did. Nearly got eaten. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we have just spent the last like 30 minutes, well, the last hour I'd say, just stargazing, just taking it all in, and it's been incredible, guys. We've taken some amazing star shots. It's been yeah. so sick. Yeah. It was James' idea to lie down and to take it all in. And like the movies. Yeah, it really does feel like the movies. It's amazing out here. Yeah, we've got some amazing shots, and yeah, we just spent the last like hour just drinking beers and taking it all in, guys. It's absolutely incredible. I'll throw you up some shots of the stars on screen now. Yeah, what a night. It's completely clear. It's amazing. Oh, just gonna chill now and catch you guys later on. Me and James have just been sat around the camp just putting the world, putting the world to rights. It's been so much fun. We've just been chatting about everything and yeah, we've had a couple of beers and yeah, we've just been chilling guys. It's been great. Really lovely evening and yeah, I'm in my World War II helmet in my World War One trench. It's been a fascinating stealth camp. Yeah, it's just been brilliant guys. So, so much fun. Now it is time just to get my sleeping bag out and just call it a night, I think. 
All right, guys, that is me all squared away. I'm gonna be sleeping in my clothes because it's definitely gonna be cold tonight. I will check in with you in the morning and update you if anything happens in the night. So yeah, see you soon. So many birds. Good morning campers. Oh, what a night that was. It was a cold one, I'll be honest. It felt very cold in the tent last night. Um, I don't know if it's because we were low to the ground or you know, in a trench, in a literal trench, but it was freezing. Stunning view, isn't it? It's mad, you see it from this perspective, you know, when there's frost on the ground, it's just completely different to what you'd expect, isn't it? It's incredible. Even the woods can be beautiful in their own way. Ladies and gentlemen, just over there, we can see a wild James. He's trotting along, straight out of bed. <laughs> That's our camp in the distance. I, I can't even tell where it is. I think it must be dead in the middle there. It is an absolutely stunning morning. James has woken up now as well. Um, you probably saw him earlier. He's just going on for a little walk over there. I thought it'd be quite fun for me to have a little walk through the trenches and just have a look at the trenches again in this kind of different light. So it's great because it's just accessible. It's kind of like a living piece of history, which you so rarely, rarely see. So, and yeah, it's just, it's just fun guys. Like it's, you feel like you're a part of it. Like you're in history. Sure, you could like restore these and dig them out to like six feet deep, but then they'd need security. They'd, they'd need a big fence around them. They need like staff, but actually right now, leaving it rugged, leaving it raw has meant that it's like returned back to nature and that you can kind of have fun with it in your own way. It doesn't have to be this very very structured thing and you don't have to pay like 15 quid to come in and see it you know it's just for free you can be here and do whatever you want I, and I think that's brilliant I, I truly do yeah I'm sorry that yesterday was so rushed unfortunately we had to set up our camp pretty much in the dark because of the amount of people that were around us so apologies if the front side of this video felt a little bit rushed but we're making up for it now we are just taking a nice tour around these trenches and then I think we're gonna head back to camp and maybe make some coffee I told James I've got some coffee with me and his eyes widen like this so <laughs> so we're definitely gonna be having some coffee before we pack up the camp and uh, settle down for the day I hope I don't look too much like the Michelin man as I walk with these <laughs> with these big old down trousers on <laughs> Oh, what a day, what a day. And this is our wonderful, wonderful camp. Oh, and look, the fog has come right in there. You can't even see across the field anymore. There's a couple of dog walkers here and there now, but the camping's over. I don't care anymore. <laughs> they can see us if they want to. <laughs> so we've got this Be Your Own Barista Brazil Minas Grias coffee that was given to me for Christmas. Uh, it's literally made for camping, so let's test it out and see how it goes. All right. So pour in hot water, and then we just serve two, two things out of it, and then Oh wow, there's coffee. Yeah, it smells like nice coffee to you, Fair. Let's do it. Uh, actually, I'll just do it. I'm worried I'm gonna burn you. I don't think you'd care about that, bro. <laughs> that, is, that is the nectar of the gods. All right, take, you gotta take this one. It smells actually nice, man. Hmm, <sighs> it's all right. For coffee in the woods, it's all right. Four out of five stars, I'd say. But yeah, you can't beat coffee when you're out on an adventure full stop, so it's just nice to have. Giving you a lot more than I've got, mate. <laughs> no, I don't want it, I don't want it back, no. <laughs> we're gonna just pay it forward by making sure there is absolutely no trace of us spending the night here. We even destroyed the campfire that we originally found here because we thought, no, we don't want to encourage that kind of behavior for now. And now, yeah, we're gonna make sure everything's clean and tidy before we leave, guys. So leave no trace, always leave no trace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to pack up the camp. We're gonna try and do it very quickly because we don't have too much time. It's getting busier and busier now, so I wanna get out scot-free. All right, let's do it, mate. Neither me or James know how to set up a tarp. We just threw it together using the wrong guy ropes. We just did a bunch of granny knots and just tied it in in different corners. And uh, we, yeah, first time we're doing it, we had no idea what we were doing, but we made it work. Okay, sleeping bag. Huh, <laughs> put on my army helmet as I do this. 
<laughs> helmet on a helmet. <laughs> God, this thing is actually so heavy. Like, it's light when you pick it up, but when you put it on your head, you feel like, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> it's just crazy. Then I'm a rest near like air. <sighs> what a great helmet though. It's actually sick. Nearly there. Yeah, I, I, I had a branch fall down on me last night. Was, really? Yeah, and I was like, is that a ghost? Am I gonna die? Is this the end? I thought about it. You just have to go, you go through phases of being like, I'm gonna die. I'm actually gonna die. I'm about to die. And then you're like, actually, that's a joke. Like, <laughs> no one knows we're here. But it's like, it hits you in waves, doesn't it? Like the, the fear of it. And then you have to just calm yourself down and then you eventually fall asleep and that's all good. All right, ready? One, put that in the top. And then we just got to get the mat away, and then the camo net, and that's it. Off the tree. God, that worked out so well, didn't it? That camo net is actually sick. Whee! That'll do for now, we can just shove it in your stuff sack. Nice one, we've done well. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. The tent is all packed away, both the tents are packed away. The camp is packed away, the tarp is gone, the camo net is gone, everything is gone. We're super happy to be finished and look we've left absolutely no trace behind us we've checked we're going to do another walk of it make sure that nothing has been left behind but guys we're feeling really really confident it's been an absolute blast an amazing trip no one's discovered us there's a few dog walkers behind us now but they're not going to say anything to us now on the way out are they so yeah thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate your time and support if you're new here make sure you subscribe to the channel I'm trying to hit that 10k someday soon yeah and if you enjoyed the video press the like button and tell me where i should go camping next drop that in the comments below so yeah from me goodbye james you want to say goodbye See you, mate. See you later. But yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Peace.